today we are discussing a case of a patient with hepatocellular carcinoma. This is a 69 year old man who presented with vague right upper quadrant abdominal discomfort, low appetite, and occasional nausea and vomiting. His past medical history is significant for diabetes that's medically controlled and hepatitis B, uh, for which he is on antiviral therapy starting eight years ago. He has a previous history of alcohol use uh, at the rate of two to, three, two to three drinks per day. On physical exam, he's noted to have mild tenderness in the epigastric and right upper quadrant areas. Uh, on laboratory evaluation, his alpha ferroprotein is 425, bilirubin is 1.2, AST 102, ALT 116, alkaline phosphate 80, INR 1.6, albumin 3.6, BUN 15, creatinine 1.5, platelet count 205,000. Uh, as far as serologies, he's hepatitis B surface antigen positive. Uh, as well, anti and hepatitis B core antibody positive. Hepatitis C antibody is negative. Uh, he, as part of his work, abdominal ultrasound, uh, which shows two hepatic lesions. This is followed by a CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. And the abdomen component is a multi-phase scan. Uh, it, it again confirms the presence of two lesions, two masses measuring 3.2 and 5.5 centimeters respectively, both of which uh, show uh, arterial enhancement and, and, and venous washout. Uh, there's also a pericentimeter nodule in the left lung of the left left lung, which is indeterminate, uh, as well as enlarged lymph nodes uh, in the abdomen, uh, measuring above 1.5 centimeters. The biopsy of the liver lesion reveals hepatocellular carcinoma that's poorly differentiated with marked fibrosis and in the uh, normal liver. Uh, a consultation is made with, uh, with surgery that determines that the patient has advanced disease and thereby not a resection candidate. Uh, the child Q score is A, and upon determination of the staging, he's determined to be BCLC stage C due to the presence of extra hepatic disease. ECOC performance status is one. The patient is initiated on treatment with atezolizumab combined with bevacizumab. Uh, the first imaging shows stable disease at two months. Subsequent imaging at four months shows two new lung lesions that are determined to be definitive for new metastatic disease. And he's taken off treatment and started on second line treatments with gabazantinib at 60 milligrams daily. Let's start by discussing the workup of, of a patient with HCC, uh, including the diagnostic workup and some discussion related to liver function. So when, it, when a patient has known risk factors for hepatocellular carcinoma, such as viral hepatitis or known liver cirrhosis, uh, there are standard criteria for imaging-based diagnosis, meaning without the without the necessary need for a biopsy. So if the patient has multi-phase imaging that shows a liver mass that's one centimeter or larger with arterial enhancement and corresponding venous or delayed out on multi-phase CT or multi-phase MRI, that would be sufficient to make the diagnosis of hepatocellular carcinoma, again, in the right clinical setting, meaning the patient has viral hepatitis or non-liver cirrhosis. If the patient does not have viral hepatitis or non-liver cirrhosis, these criteria do not apply and a biopsy would be required. Similarly, if the patient does not have the typical arterial enhancement and corresponding venous or delayed phase washout, a biopsy would be required. Please note that the alpha ferroprotein is not part of the diagnostic criteria of HCC anymore. As we know that alpha ferroprotein is nonspecific and can be elevated for multiple reasons, including other space-occupying lesions in the liver. In regards to liver function, 
when treating hepatocellular carcinoma, uh, we are always treating two diseases at once. We are treating or taking into consideration the underlying liver disease and liver cirrhosis as well as the cancer. We know that the underlying liver function is prognostic by itself. So patients who have CHALP-UA cirrhosis do better than patients with CHALP-UB cirrhosis with, with equal uh, cancer staging. So the chalp function is prognostic in these patients. We also know that the safety and efficacy of all the adopted clinical treatment regimens for advanced HCC have been studied in the setting of chalp ua cirrhosis. Very few have data for more advanced liver disease such as chalp ub So that's important. Uh, and that's an important part of the discussion when we are deciding on how to treat a patient who presents with a new diagnosis of hepatocellular carcinoma. So patients with more advanced cirrhosis, high, high CHALP-UB, meaning CHALP-UB 8 or 9, or CHALP-UC, patients who are requiring therapeutic paracentesis, who have active hepatic encephalopathy, are usually not treatment candidates. For, to treat their cancer because their mortality is really probably more driven by the advanced cirrhosis and we do not have sufficient safety information about treating their cancer as well. 